Welcome. I've done a couple of previous videos on calculating SHA checksums on Mac and Windows. In this video, I'm going to talk about doing the same on Ubuntu. So I'm using a laptop with Ubuntu 20.04 LTS, but this would work on any other version of Ubuntu and more or less any version of Linux too. So for the example I'm going to use, I'm at the Raspberry Pi OS download page and I've downloaded this Raspberry Pi OS, uh, the full version. And at the bottom of this here, you see SHA-256 and it has this long hexadecimal number after it. So that is a hash. So you download this file and then you run software that has an algorithm that will create this hash, hopefully. And that means you've downloaded the correct file. So to calculate this, we want to go to the terminal. So I'll click on that. So I'm at a terminal here. And on this system, if I type SHA and then hit tab twice, it'll show you the different SHA sum software that you have on this system. So we have SHA1, SHA256, 512, 224, 384, and then we just have SHA sum. So if we look at the web page here, this said SHA256. So we can either use SHA-256 or we can use SHA-SUM. So in this video, I'm going to use SHA-SUM and then I'll add on SHA-256 to it. So you can see how to do that. Systems are more likely to have SHA-SUM than all the others, although I'm guessing most systems have all of these. So I'm going to type in SHA-SUM space dash A space, and then I'll type in 256 because we want SHA-256. I'll hit space and then I'll go to my files and in my downloads folder, I have this. So you could type the name out here or you can just drag it over to your terminal. So obviously if you're using a console display, you would just type it out. I'll hit enter here and this will calculate the checksum. So I'll put a link in the description to these commands that I'm typing in so you don't have to copy them off the screen. So the reason you'd want a checksum is you want to make sure the file you downloaded is, hasn't been altered in any way. And that could be due to download corruption or it could be malicious intent. Someone could try and modify that file because they want to hack into your computer. So if someone has modified that binary while it was hosted on say the Raspberry Pi website and then they calculated the checksum on Raspberry Pi side and you download it and check the checksum, that file could still be bad. But this is to make sure it doesn't get corrupted between Raspberry Pi servers and your computer. Okay, so here we have the checksum. So I'll try and show both of these at the same time. So here it starts off with FDBD, and here we have FDBD. At the end here we have DD61 and DD61. So you can check every single digit of these. For our purposes, I think you can just check the beginning and end and see if they're the same. If you're in a really high security situation, you might want to check every single one. The way these hashes work is if even a single bit is changed on this software we downloaded, it will completely change this hash. So if we change a single bit here, this hash would not look anything like the other hash. So we can run this and save it to a file. So I'll press the up arrow and then I'll type greater than space, then I'll type hash dot SHA-256. I'll hit enter. Okay, so now I'll type cat space hash dot 256. And you see we have the same thing we had outputted here. We have the hash and then we have the file name. So instead of using the file name here, you could have used a wildcard and done say like a dozen files and all 12 of those would show up in this file here. Then if someone downloads 12 files and you give them this file with the hashes in it, they can check those files with that. So we will use this file to check the checksum. So I'll type SHA sum space dash C space and then hash dot SHA-256. So what this will do is this will confirm that this hash matches up with the file. So I'm doing this on the same computer, but the whole point of this is you could direct someone to a website to download these large files, and then you could email them the hashes, and then they could confirm that they got the files correctly. So I'll hit enter, and this will do the hash calculation. Okay, that completed. So here we have the name of the file, and it says OK at the end. So if you had a dozen files in here, it would list the files out, and if the hash was correct, it would say OK. So that's all for this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.